So once you have chapter one done, then you're going to take a look at chapter two. And chapter two relates to human rights issues and how are human rights related to the employment situation. So first of all, uh, we need to get a background on human rights legislation in Canada. And you can see from it that human rights legislation is relatively new. Uh, it has not been well established in Canadian history. It is, you know, within, 30, within the last 30 years that human rights issues have really taken hold. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms really set out and fundamentalized some of the issues of human rights when it forebode the uh, outright discrimination based on race, sex, creed, all these sorts of things that the charter, uh, the charter contains. And then keep in mind that the charter only came in in 1982. So in Newfoundland and Labrador, human rights have been kind of left to the way for a long time. It was only in 2010 that a formal and, and complete Human Rights Act was brought into place in this province. So again, um, we have a ways to go, and we've come a long ways in the last number of years in order to entrenching individual human rights within our legislative um, domains, we'll call it. This then poses some challenges for employers because of the fact that human rights issues are relatively new. We got a lot of people who aren't as aware of the human rights issues as they should. And from a hiring point of view, an employment point of view, a good knowledge of human rights and the, the legal requirements and the legal obligations that come of them, come of the legislation that is, uh, is very essential. Uh, otherwise you could lead yourself open to uh, all kinds of legal, uh, legal ramifications. In the document I posted for you, you will see, for example, uh, links to the human rights legislation. And uh, like most legislation in Canada, it follows a multi-jurisdictional approach so that certain jurisdictions have different codes than others. Uh, essentially, federal and federally regulated employees are covered under the Canada Human Rights Code. The uh, provincial employees of various provinces are covered under respective provincial legislation. In Newfoundland and Labrador, human rights violations under the Act uh, cover discrimination on several grounds, race, color, nationality, ethnic origin, social origin, religious creed, religion, age, disability, disfigurement, sex, sexual orientation, marital status, family status, source of income, and political opinion. And the Act prohibits discrimination in the following circumstances. Employers will not discriminate against employees, potential employees, based on criminal convictions. Uh, when providing good services, accommodation, or facilities which are customarily available to the public, uh, you can't refuse. When granting occupancy of a commercial or self-contained dwelling unit, for example, refusing to rent an apartment to an individual because of her uh, or his family status. In the area of employment, which is critical here, refusing to hire an individual because of his sexual orientation. With respect to attachment of wages, for example, firing someone because their wages were being garnished. In uh, publications, for example, posting a job advertisement in a newspaper to ask specifically for mail-only applications. Our legislation now prevents a lot of those things. So that's good. It is a timely thing. But the, th the thing is, there are so many little catches that not everyone's totally aware of them. And the challenge is in keeping yourself educated as to what you can and can't do in terms of the employment situation. So you need to be familiar with the Act related to Newfoundland, the Act related to uh, the federal legislation. However, you know when you make a job choice and when you go when you interview candidates, you're going to have to be able to discriminate one candidate from another. So the question is, on what basis do you make that discrimination? Well, as a general rule, uh, we can look at educational levels, we can look at experience, but what if everyone's the same? How do we discriminate then? And if we do discriminate, on what basis and will that basis be legitimate? Well, we think about uh, some legitimate grounds on which we can discriminate. Probably the one that comes up the most from the employment point of view is a bona fide occupational requirement. And bona, what a bona fide occupational requirement is that uh, the person has to be a certain type of individual in order to do the job. They have to be able to see. They may have to be a woman. They may have to be tall. They may have to be strong. 
these sorts of things. The question is, how, do you, how does something become bona fide? How does it become defensible in court? And this has proven to be very, very challenging for a lot of employers because when they make this bona fide occupational requirement, they're going to have to stand behind it. And the court system has not taken a very uh, lenient approach with regards to what constitutes a bona fide occupational requirement when decision making is done with regards to who to hire. So that reason uh, is really caught up into an issue of how many, how many types of things can we do? Uh, how many types of, of rationales can be used in order to make a decision? Well, first and foremost, the court system has come out and said, well, any reason that you have has to be rationally connected with the job. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is the reason must be based on an honest belief. And it has to be an honest belief that it's necessary to satisfy the legitimate uh, business cases for the job. And finally, the reason must be reasonably necessary to accomplish the purpose and impossible to accommodate the individual or group without creating undue hardship. So it come, speaks to this issue of accommodation. Employers must accommodate individuals up to the point of undue hardship. Big organizations would have less ability to stand on this one than small organizations because their ability to accommodate would be much greater. So when we do recruiting, we need to be aware of what exactly constitutes bona fide occupational requirements and in the selection process, are we being appropriate in terms of the types of tools we're using in order to make that selection of types of qualifications. So we need to think about this in terms of job openings, in terms of using employment agencies, in terms of writing our ads. We have to be absolutely aware that when we do things, we do it in such a way as to not to offend the human rights issues. So those are the key things that you want to, uh, to look at and uh, make sure you're aware of those in Chapter 2.